Hi folks, welcome to part 4 of the RS Turbo restoration. In the last video you see me uh, prep all the inner seat, um, fill the hole in and then brace, brace the back and also straighten the bottom out. Today we're going to have a look at getting it fitted. Um, there's, there's quite a lot involved. Um, the floor on this is pretty good. If, if I was replacing the whole floor, then you'd just cut it out and then sort of rebuild it as you're going. But this floor is pretty good. Um, at, at the front here and it's only a little bit at the back that I've, I've really got to worry about so we need to try and take it off a little bit more carefully I um, also need to do the outer seal as well which won't happen today but it's going to come off today so why I'm going to do it, the first thing we need to do is we, we need to brace it because we're taking quite a lot of the strength away from the vehicle we do need to brace it so I've got this bit of box section I'm going to clean it up it doesn't have to be pretty but I'm just going to weld that across there that way it's going to keep the gap solid and it, should, it shouldn't move at all then. Um, then what we're going to do is drill out all these spot welds. Um, because we're replacing this I'm not going to use a spot weld drill, I'm just going to drill all the way through and then I'll, uh, I'll cut the bottom of this off, get the, the inner seal out of the way and then I'm going to uh, cut off the outer seal. I'm not going to cut the full outer seal off, I want to leave this top plate. That, the, the reason I want to do that is one, it's going to give it a little bit of extra strength, but two, because they're pattern parts that I'm fitting, I know for a fact they're, they're not quite right. So leaving this original piece in, I can line the uh, inner seal up to this outer piece, and then once I've got that welded in, I know that's right, then we can replace the outer seal, and then I know everything should be exactly where it should be. I'll also be taking lots of measurements, writing everything down, so I can just double check everything and we'll go through it. So, like I said, first thing I'm going to do is clean that brace up, clean these up, get this welded on here, and then we'll, uh, we'll move forward. When you're doing these, what you need to make sure of is because you're going to be cutting this brace off at some point, you don't want to be welding it in places that you can't get the grinder in. You need to try and be be thoughtful about where you weld it. You want to obviously be strong, but you, also, you, you do need to be able to cut it off and then clean the welds up so you can't tell that something's been welded there. So as you can see, I'm going to be welding across there, which I can easily get a grinder in. I'll put a couple of tacks on here as well. That'll keep that solid. And then along here and along here. I can easily get the grinder in both ways and then I'll probably put a tack there as well. All I did was just quickly mark it up, that way I'm not over cleaning where I don't need to be, I'm not, I'm not wasting time doing it. Uh, the way I'm going to be cleaning these up again, as I've done always, just use one of these strip and clean pads. Uh, link for these are in the description, absolutely love these. You know, they, they take off all of the material without taking any, any of your metal away. Cleans it back nice and clean, gets rid of the rust spots, everything. If you do the restoration, get some of these, they're absolutely epic. There you go, that's it. Um, you don't really want to go too mad with it. Again, like I said, you've got to cut it off. All you want to do is just keep it solid. I'm not going to be taking so much of the car away that it's going to collapse. Um, we've still got the inner ribs there. That's still going to stay in. Um, what I will do, once I've drilled it out, I might sort of put in a brace across here or a brace across there, just in case. Um, but for the minute, I'm happy with that. I've never had a problem doing this before. So, yeah, let's... Uh, Start drilling some spot welds out.
Uh, as you can see, I uh, pilot drilled it first and then I went out to the 8mm of the, the spot welds. The reason I've done that is because the 8mm has got quite a big tip, right, and you're coming in at different angles, you can find, you, you'll find it, it can sometimes wander. So doing a pilot hole first, it just saves a lot of stress. It takes a little bit longer in the, you know, overall, but it's a lot less stressful, you know. Drill, drill a pilot hole, then go through with uh, your 8mm. Um, you, you'll also be able to see, if, well, when you uh, drill it with your pilot drill, you'll be able to see if you're slightly off centre, so then when you drill it with the 8mm, you can sort of twist it and adjust it, so you're not, you, you can really get the entire spot weld. Um, I'm not going to let you watch me drill all the holes out, uh, but I'll come back once I've done it. Um, the ones along the top here, I'm just going to drill straight through because uh, everything's getting replaced, so it doesn't really matter. But along here, obviously, you know, th this needs to stay factory, so um, I will be using like, a normal spot weld drill across here. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'll get all the holes done and then we'll come back and then we'll get it off. Right, okay, so I've, I've gone ahead and I've uh, drilled it all out. This is it's actually quite loose now, but obviously it's still attached. Um, I've made all my me measurements. Um, I've measured from here to the point here, marked out where it is using um, a marker. And then I've measured from this bar but to, to every little point. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to uh, get it all cut out. I'm not going to go all the way into the end because as is, like I said in the previous video, this, this is supposed to be um, like, an, like an overseal. So this would have, that little cutout would have gone across there and then typically these tabs are supposed to go this side. But that's not how it's supposed to be on the car. Um, I haven't cut these off yet because I'm not quite sure how good it is in there. I don't know, I might butt weld it in, I might use the tabs. I don't know yet until we put it apart. So I've left it there, it's no problem to touch up the primer. So what I want to do, I'm going to cut it sort of fairly close up onto this lip here um, and on the front here I'm going to do, do the same uh, as you can see I've drilled out the spot welds then I'm going to cut along that little lip flush with the, the floor that way uh, and then I'm going to cut around that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the outer seal off so I'm going to cut the outer seal down there and then I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that lip on for now all the way along there, and then I'll cut that off. Uh, that way I can get access into the inner seal, and then um, I'll take take this piece off. Once I've got all that off, I can clean this lip up, get the new inner seal in, and then once once we've got this nice dating point again, we can we can make the floor, get that whole sandwich back together, and then do the out seal. I'll do the outer seal and the wheel arch at the same time so then we can get a nice crisp line in here somewhere. Um, we don't, the, the outer seal comes up to here I think, somewhere. Um, but we don't really need it, this is still fairly good. So I'll trim the panel down and I'll only use what I need to use. Um, so like I said, what I'm going to do is cut it just below this line for now. That keeps all this little piece in. As you can see, these are my measurements here. All I've done is just measured from there to there. Three different places, so I know where it is. Same on the inner seal. Um, that should be fairly flat across there, but it's, you know, for the sake of taking a measure and writing it down, it's not a problem at all. So yeah, like I said, gonna get it all cut off. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. I just bought this from Amazon, um, I'll put a link in the description, but it's basically um, a little oscillating model tool, but it runs on air. And with this scraper attachment, it's absolutely fantastic for getting underseal off um, and sound deadening and everything else. 
absolute wonderful bit of kit. Obviously, you can have the ones with the batteries and stuff like that. But this one runs on air, I think it was 25, 26 quid. Like I said, links in the description. Fantastic bit of kit. And they come with the scraper attachment, um, a load of other things like sander, and standard sort of things. And you can buy all the other ones from like Tool Station, Screw Fix, and the other bits and bobs. So that's it, that's all cut out now. Um, I'm just going to use hammer and chisel. Uh, I've got a big bolster chisel. Just get into this gap carefully without distorting anything. And then uh, we'll get the inner set up completely. So, nice big bolster. And then light taps just to break the seat. Right, there we go, that's the inner seal removed. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll move the camera and the lights and I'll uh, cut all this off. Um, and yeah, I'll cut all this off. And then we'll uh, start cleaning things up. Okay, as I said earlier, um, I want to cut this outer seal off. The, the only reason I want to cut the outer seal off at this stage is so I can gain access to the lip. So then when I put the inner seal in, I can make sure that's all nice and tight. I don't want to be cutting all of this off at the minute and leaving a massive gap. Right. I want to leave this bit here, so I've still got my measurements and everything there. So I want to come down probably about 20 mil along that line, um, and then I'll probably come to about there, not quite all the way to the front, and then I'll just continue that along there, and then get rid of keeping a little bit of strength in the car, it's keeping it straight. Um, I did have the jack there and a bit of wood but that's, that's sprung up so that's not a problem, it's swinging up. It's not bad, it's swinging down this bad. It is very rotten at the back end. Um, the inner sill is gone and then there's the strengthening plate which is the inner rib that comes down all of that's gone as well. Uh, yeah, just can see that. So, that one we're making. And then obviously, the floor pan, which we know about. Um, what I need to do now, is I'm gonna take this, 
this is it put up here and leave the actual floor, the original floor pan. Because the floor pan itself is pretty good, but you can just about see on the spot there as the best point. So focus. Yeah, focus. Okay. There you go. So this is what I was saying about that you've got the three skins. So there you've got the floor pan with it coming down. This is your inner seal, that's the lip for the inner seal and then that's the lip for the outer seal. So what we need to do is I need to go through now and take off these two lips all the way to the front and then just leave the original floor pan. Once I've got the original floor pan, then I can make this bit of floor pan because that's just a straight line. It's nice and easy to make it a straight edge. Yeah, it's easy because that, that's just a piece of angle. Um, I will roll it around a little bit as well, I'll make that and then make, make the little you can see where it was there. Once we've got the floor pan made, then we can get the inner seal back in and work out how we're going to attach it at the front and the back. Now as you can see, I'll just cut it there for a minute. Um, I'll probably This reinforces back, I can't get behind it. I might just butt weld it there and then re plug weld these back in. I'll take the tennis bit off, re plug weld that in. But butt weld it there with a, a little plate behind it. I'll put a piece of plate there so that I can get a decent penetration all the way through. Um, and then that little plate will bridge the gap. And then I'll probably do the same at the back here as well. Um, because and that's fairly solid up a little bit there, which I can just about get to. So, and then I'll just really make that as, as a little piece. Um, my camera on the tripod, you know, won't actually go low enough so you can see this. Um, so I will, I'll get that down. I'll cut that, cut that one off, clean the lip up, and then. Uh, I'll show you what I've done. Oh, the other thing I did as well, there you can just about see. Um, I didn't quite drill the holes quite right, so I'll put a clean that in there as well. But for the most part, they've all come off fairly clean. Not that it mattered too much. So yeah, I'm going to go through now and do that. I'm not going to try and drill the uh, spot words out unless there's a little trick you can do. Because there's spot words all over, if you use the grinder and you just make little slits, just shallow slits all the way along, you can break it out and then all you've got to do is just linish back the actual weld itself. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a couple of pictures of I'm going and I'll, I'll throw them in so you'll see what I'm doing and then next time you see next time I'll do the video, that, that should all be nice clean. So, Going through, cleaning the edge up. That's just a floor pan now. Um, taking all this back to bare metal, nice and clean. I say I haven't cut that bit off yet. What I have gone and done is I've made like to go in there. Come focus. Then left a little bit extra on the bottom so I can cut it out. And then go in and join in there. Now, as you see, made this play. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I haven't shown you how to do it on, on camera because what I do is I'll, the other side's worse. So instead of having to go through the whole in the seal process again, I'll concentrate more on sort of making the floor a bit for you, try and keep it a bit more interesting. So, all I'm gonna do now, as I said, it's all cleaned up, not back to bare metal. I'm gonna use a permanent marker, just basically colour it all in and then I'm going to scribe, place that on there and then I'll, I'll scribe out where I need to cut. The only, I, the only thing I do need to do is I need to sort of get get this little lip off here. Um, I can't get the camera under there so I'm just going to have to go ahead and do it. What I'll do is I'll try and make a new stand for when I do the other side so then you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Now I've got this little bit um, taken off, it's just a little bit of the floor pan that went under there. I can start lining this up. The reason I wanted to get that off before and is so then I can tuck the panel behind 
and line it up. That way I've got a true um, representation of where it's supposed to be. The other thing I have done is I've uh, trimmed the bottom of the plate off. I, like I said earlier, you know, it was a little bit too long. You know, I've gone and trimmed that. All we're going to do now is, like I said, just use using a permanent marker, I'm just going to quickly colour it in and then that way when I've, I use like my little scrub I can you know I can have a real definitive line of work and see where I need to cut. Simple as that really. So now we'll get this in. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of clamps on there to make sure that's nice and flat and then I'll uh, scrub around it. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting the grinder out and then cutting this piece off. Simple as. As always, you want to cut inside the line, i.e. sort of closer to the plate. So I'll be running sort of the edge of the disc right on the inside of this line. That way, you know, you, you can always sort of linish it back a little bit, take the metal off. It's really hard to put it back on. So just take your time, you'll get a nice neat, neat fitting panel. <laughs> There we go. You can see that's from Ron, Lady Gone. That's basically what we just chopped out. Once a little bit of tweaking, it's not quite the right shape here, you know, but as a, you know, if you want a nice fitting panel, you know, left a little bit extra on so that way we've got plenty of room to fail it and get it down, get it down nice and neat. So the first thing I want to do is probably take that a little bit closer on the edge. Well, it took a little while, but I'm now happy with the fit of this. I had to sort of tweak it, like I said earlier, just fed it a little bit more for the shape. Um, but I'm happy with the way it fits. The, the floor, it has, has lost a lot of strength because I've cut it out, so it has dropped in the middle a little bit. But I know for a fact that, you know, that's, that's strong and straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the edges, clamp it up, because I know they're, they're, they're fixed points, and then I'll slowly bring, uh, bring the floor up to it. All I'm going to be doing is just using a series of magnets. I've got one of these little um, uh, ma magnet switches here. These are great. If I can find them on Amazon, I'll put a, description, uh, a link down in the description for you. Um, I've also got these ones as well. So I'm just going to be using magnets, C clamps, whatever fits, wherever it can go, and we'll, uh, we'll slowly get all this to, to go where it's supposed to be, and we'll, uh, we'll tack it all the way through. You'll want some hammer and dolly work as I go through it, but for now, you see that's nice and flat there. You know that's that's into there. So what I'll do is I'm going to weld it underneath there on that seam, and then I'll put a small stitch in there where that's nice and flat, and then we'll slowly bring it into the centre.
Now we've got a little tacked in. I'm happy with it, the finish. Just want to make sure everything's sort of straight as, as it is. Now I want to sort of seam mold it. Don't want to go completely sort of all out seam molding it because you will distort it and you'll end up, because of this lip, you'll end up bowing it whichever way uh, as it sort of warps. What you want to do is where, where you've sort of just tacked it, just sort of go again and again uh, all the way along each one. First of all though, just sort of go, go over every single one before you weld it, just make sure that, the, that it's, it's flat again, you know, just hammer and dolly. And then, yeah, just sort of go through until you've completed the welds. completely seam molded it now. You can see where it's sort of started and stitched and then stitched. You know, you can see the progression as I've gone right through. But still nice neat welds. I don't think it's distorted, it seems pretty flat. Um, got, you can see I've got good penetration on the back here. You know, it's gone all the way through nice. I've just cut a little bit, so I've just that's such a good one there. There's a little bit here. So nice and there. But yeah, nice and flat, good penetration all the way around. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start putting it all up, get it all in its back, and then um, I'll get it etch point. Six months later. As you can see, cleaned it all up, a um, little bit uh, primer on it, you can barely sort of see it. You know, clean all the words up, a little bit of primer, you can't even see what I think. Um, so I'm going to stand shit down, absolutely spot on. Same goes in there, you know, you can't really tell what it's been done. You know, a bit of silly there, it needs to come off, and obviously that's the need to do the plug words there, but for now, that's not too bad. So now we've got that done, we can uh, start actually getting getting the inner seal in. Um, as you can see, I've left sort of a little bit here, a little bit here. That's because, again, these are repair panels. They've got this lip and the design that they sit sort of on, on these bits here in here, which we're going to cut off. So what I need to do is get it down there, mark out roughly where these are, so then I can trim this down and then I'll, I'll butt load it. Now butt welding is not necessarily the strongest for an inner seal, but the way I'm going to do it is because I can get access from like this side, once I've welded it, I'll put a plate on the back to sandwich it together and sort of bridge the gap. So it will be perfectly strong, but from the outside it will look absolutely factory and concrete. So as I said, you see what I mean, it sort of goes goes in here and here. So you need to lock that off, lock that off. But for now, I just want to mark it out roughly where it's going to be. And what I'll do is I'll over trim it and then sort of slowly sort of bring it into the size. Because it's obviously easier, it takes a little bit longer, but it's easier to sort of keep trimming and keep trimming rather than to try and bridge a gap that's too big. Good, as you said, we've got it in. Yeah, it's just a matter of now just sort of adjusting it here and there. I think this back edge is going to be pretty spot on. Well, the little bit of the inner seal where I cut out is it's just rusty on this edge here, so I'm going to leave the, the new part. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave the new part as is and then score and cut off sort of the, the original bit. Um, but the front here. Because it's got this little cutout, I want to keep right, retain that original piece. So now it's just a matter of fettling this down until we get it close enough. I've trimmed it um, back quite a bit, and I've got it sort of almost spot on. We're pretty much sitting where it needs to be now. We're a little bit high on this side; it's just sort of touching the top over here, and um, pretty much the same here. So now what I'm going to do is, although I said I wasn't going to sort of cut these. Now we've got to the point where, because 
where, where I've chopped these off before, they weren't quite straight. So now what we can do is if we scribe on the actual car, then, then we can get an absolute beautiful butt weld. We'll trust the old scribe. I do want to make sure it's nice and solid where it needs to be so it doesn't move. As you can see, cut my fence. Well, you probably can't see much on this side. I've cut that side off now. Um, I've been backwards and forwards to the bench a couple of times. Got it. Um, trim this up a little bit more. Got it fitting really, really nice now. As I said earlier, it really does make the world a difference. If you just spend the time getting it to fit. See, that's all nice and flush. Nice and flat. So now what we need to do is we need to clean the uh, all the paint. Off. We need to clean all this paint off, clean all the all the swarf up. Same with this. Yeah, all the, just clean all the crap off of it, um, and then we need to make a series of holes down along the bottom, so then we can plug weld it to the floor pan. Literally just as easy as that, just make sure all the paint's out of the way. You, you really do get so much better weld if you just spend the time cleaning everything up, make sure you've got no rust spots, no paint. Obviously this is the X Primer which I can weld through so I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, so yeah, all, all the seal is off as well, it's nice, nice and clean, so I should get a real nice weld on that, it says. Um, now I'll just uh, go through and we'll uh, punch these out. Um, I'm going to measure it out, you don't have to, you can just go sort of all for it, but I, I like to measure it out that I get nice consistent line all the way through. Yeah, there's no real sort of rule of thumb to, to how to do these, I mean the original ones are, they're about 40, between 40 and 50 mil apart, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to go 40 mil apart on all of them. And then we should, that should be good enough. Yeah, just as simple as that. Hopefully, you can see it. Doesn't have to be anything special. Now, I'm going to use this. This is literally the best bit of kit I've ever bought. As far as I'm concerned, no drilling holes, no messing around. This is an air hole punch and jodder in one. So if you're doing um, like an overlap of two panels, you can use that all the way through. Beautiful. I'll put a link in the uh, description for one of these. It's, they don't cost a lot, but I'll tell you what, they're a time saver. Watch how quickly I go through this. I won't sweep up one. Literally as quick as that, all of them holes are done. Seriously, I think that cost me about 40 quid. Like I say, I'll put a link in the description for one. Um, just, just get one. Don't bother with the hand ones, get the air one. Just absolute brilliant. Right. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just put a couple of clamps. 
I'm obviously not going to be welding it to um, the outer seal because we still need to replace that. But I just want to hold it in place. This is why we kept that top piece on and only cut the bottom piece. So we've got access all around, but we know where it's supposed to be. Right, so let's check the measurements. 978. small jack and a block of wood and just take that up. It wants to go up about three mil. Got the trolley jack underneath it. I've had a measure. Um, whenever you're doing something like this, always try and use the, the same tape measure because not all tape measures are exactly the same. You know, you'll have some discrepancies. For this, it doesn't matter too much. You know, a couple of mil is not gonna make any difference in the grand scheme of things. But if you're doing suspension work, you know, half a mil will make a massive difference. So, good rule of thumb, you know, it's just best practice. Always try and stick with the same tape measure. You don't necessarily need to know the exact measurement, but what you do need to do is make sure you've got a repeatable measurement. You know, we measured that with this before, you know, measure it again, we can get it, get it accurate. Right, um, the first thing I want to do is just tack the edges in. All I'm gonna do is, is tack it in for now. Yeah, I don't want to go fully seam welding. Just tack it in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera, and then we'll go through. We'll clamp all the bottom up, and we'll get it all plug welded. Here you can see it's it's where it should be. This this little bit here is um, where I actually put a little bit extra on the floor panel. So you can see just there's a little steps. And I don't want too much and this is also the bit where it comes in really really handy to have. Lots and lots and lots of trunks. So, on the side of the middle, and <clears throat> basically work my way out and get the trunks up. Now the, uh, the floor pan is welded to the inner seal, we'll uh, finish off doing this. This is going to be exactly the same way as you do any other um, butt welding. You know, just make sure, just go for it slowly, you don't want to do a seam weld because you, you'll warp it. Um, just go for it, sort of make sure it's completely flush, put a tack in it, go to the next bit, make sure it's completely flush, 
Um, it doesn't matter if it warps a little bit, obviously, because it, it's inside, you know, it's not like a finished panel. But, yeah, it still, still take your time. You know, the, the biggest issue that you want to make sure is make sure that, that they're welded together properly, not sort of, uh, sort of like that or like that. You know, you want to sort of uh, proper, sort of perpendicular. Uh, one thing that I did forget to do uh, before I put this in um, was I forgot to drill some holes here and here. Um, the, obviously the axle only sort of comes to, sort of about here and then sort of goes along, but the inner seal goes in a little bit, so I have just gone and just drilled the holes quickly. Um, obviously I haven't drilled them all the way through, I've just drilled the, the inner seal so then I can clamp it and plug weld it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll just crack on. Sorry about you didn't see me finish sort of welding it. Uh, the camera fell up and uh, got full up, and I just didn't see it. I'm not going to uh, clean the welds up now. Um, I'm going to do that when I've, I've started doing uh, the outer seal, just because it'd be easier to do it all in one go. You know, there's no point cleaning that up until I finish seam welding down there. Then there's no point just doing little bits and then coming back to it. So I'll do it all in one go, and then. And what I can do is I can once once it's all cleaned up I can just prime it. So that is pretty much that that it well it's not pretty much it, that, that is it for this video. Um inner seal's all fitted, next video will be uh, cracking on with the outer seal. Um yeah, yeah, next video will be cracking on with the outer seal. That way I can then just move this bar straight over to the other side when it comes to it. And um, the next video uh, when, when I do the other side, I'll concentrate more on sort of doing the floor repair opposed to the inner seal. So that way you're not watching the same uh, crap over and over again. Um, Apologise for me COVID hair. I will have it cut for the next video, maybe, hopefully. It's actually been six months since I started doing this, but then me, me laptop died, as, as people are probably aware already. Laptop died, I couldn't empty the camera, so this literally just has been sat. I spent all day yesterday clearing it out because it's full of dust and other stuff that we've been doing. So anyway, rambling on. Um, thanks for watching and persevering all the way to the end. Um, if you like what I'm doing, please let me know uh, by giving us a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. When you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified of all the videos that I put up. Um, please consider going over to Patreon and supporting me on there. You know, for a small fee, it, it really does sort of help me sort of continue doing what I'm doing. You know, the camera's expensive, I just had to build a new PC that's expensive. You know, and again, you know, I had to put this on hold for six months because, you know, I just didn't have the, the funds to sort of continue. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, I've got other projects on the go that I'm not filming, but, you know, I'm taking pictures and always updating on that. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, see you next time. Cheers, bye.